All right, here we are again for part two of today's lecture uh, on ENGR 2302 Engineering Dynamics. Uh, we'll be continuing on with some uh, more material for, from our 13th lecture here. And we'll be looking at some more examples of, uh, of rigid body uh, kinetics, in particular looking at um, plane motion of rigid bodies. So I just intend to work through a few examples. All right. So let's consider this here. Okay, <clears throat> so consider this system as described, as shown below, <clears throat> as shown here. Um, I'm going to have a drum of 4 inch radius attached to a disc of 8 inch radius. So I'm going to have a drum and a disc all thick, uh, connected together. So we have an inner drum and an outer disc. And my center of mass will be right at the center. That makes sense. Nice. It's a circle, so that would be nice. And uh, wrapped around it is a cord. There will be a, actually, let me put the dimensions on first. Um, this is going to have a radius of four inches. So the inner um, drum will have a radius of 4 inches, and then the outer disc will have a radius of 8 inches. So 8 inches and 4 inches. And here, I'm going to, a cord will be attached here, so it would wrap around the inner drum. And this will, ha will have a force P here, where P has a, uh, is a value of 5 pounds. It has a magnitude of 5 pounds. P has a magnitude of 5 pounds. And I will also say that the combined uh, mass, a combined mass of the drum and the disc is 10 pounds. Okay, and then uh, the coefficient of kinetic friction, and this thing is rolling along the ground here. So I say a disc, I mean it's rolling along the ground. And the coefficients of friction here, of kinetic and um, static friction between the wheel and the ground, mu static is going to be 0 0.25, and mu kinetic, the coefficient of kinetic friction, is going to be 0 0.20. And I want to determine, now in this problem we're not actually solving for anything in particular, but I just want to draw the free body diagram and kinetic diagram for the system. The free body diagram and kinetic diagram for the system. For the system. All right, so let me show this here. And I would have uh, a few forces on here. And so this would be the solution. Now actually in this particular problem, uh, we won't be able to really use the kinetic or the static friction much, namely because uh, because I'm just labeling the forces, we don't really know their magnitudes directly, or not concerned directly with their magnitudes, or namely we don't know whether this thing is moving or stationary. So I'm just going to label the forces instead, and saying if we were looking at, a, if we were trying, we don't know the, what I'm saying is we don't know the uh, circumstances of the problem is the better way to phrase that. And so we have this here, and the wheel, and the drum. And then here, I'm going to have a, a center of mass here, or a centroid here, and a center of mass here, and a center of mass here. Then I have a force P applied here. I have the force P applied here. I have the weight W, which, allow, which will act downward through the center of mass, 
So W here. I have my force of friction here. And I could have it going either way, depending on what the, what the system was described, or what the problem was described as. Um, force of friction. And then I would have the normal force pointing upward. Normal force. And those are all the forces acting on the system. Although I might also go ahead and label the radiuses, or the, dis the distances here. So I might say that this is four inches. See, the most important d dimensions that you might want to consider are the radius of the forces from the center or from the accentroid. So this would be 4 inches, this would be 8 inches, this would be 8 inches, and this would equal this, and now I would want, so this is my free body diagram, and my kinetic diagram here, showing the inertial forces. And so again I would have Uh, MAX, MAY, and I alpha. I alpha here. Any questions on that? Again, hopefully fairly straightforward. All right, um, maybe I'll look at another one here. Okay, well, I think you kind of get the idea. Okay. Mm. Okay. So let us look at this here. Well, let me work through an example problem. So I should, I'll say that uh, all this is given. At a forward speed, of uh, 30 feet per second, uh, 30 feet per second, a, a truck um, applies the brakes. Applies the brakes. Um, the wheels lock and stop rotating. Um, and it was found that so at, basically at this point the truck will end will enter a skid. Um, it skids to a stop in 20 feet. In 20 feet. And um, I will say then determine the magnitude. Uh, of the normal reaction of the normal force or reaction uh, normal reaction um, and the friction force at each wheel as the truck stopped and uh, friction on each wheel as the truck stopped. And I'll draw out the truck as well and show the dimensions. So if you remember from physics class, we you would use the coefficient of kinetic friction for if a wheel is sliding and coefficient of static friction if a wheel is uh, rolling along a surface with no slip uh, as the truck skids as the truck skids, okay? This here, this here, so we have a truck, we have a poorly drawn truck here. And that's what all pickup trucks look like, as we know. It's a happy pickup truck. Yeah, it has a window now. Yes. And a wind... Uh, oh, yeah, it's... Uh, uh, yeah, I tried. Um, anyway, 
let's say this thing has a center of mass here and the ground is here. Wow, I really can't draw trucks, can I? Um, anyway, I can't draw anything, can I? Uh, anyway, so this is going to be point A, and this is going to be point B. And then let us say that this is 5 feet and 7 feet. five feet and seven feet. And the vertical here is four feet. The vertical distance to the centroid is four feet here. Okay. Uh, so let's find this here. And we're going to start by drawing our um, free body diagram and our, and our uh, kinetic diagram. So that's gonna be the first step. And um, we're gonna, this is gonna be a little more complicated than it would seem at first. So, um, I'm going to draw the truck as a rectangle. This is the truck now. Y'all just have to live with it. <laughs> this is the truck now. <laughs> I have altered the deal for I do not alter it further. <laughs> um, now, uh, this is the truck. And we're going to have an, a velocity that is pointing forward and an acceleration. So I'm going to have an initial velocity, um, VO equals 30 feet per second. And I know that um, I'm going to have some A that's going to be accelerating or decelerating this thing. So this isn't really three, but this isn't really the free body diagram yet. I'm just sort of laying everything out that I already know. I'm going to have some sort of A and it's going to be a negative number. And I also know that uh, the delta x, the delta x during this phase where it's breaking is 20 feet. So I can just use, uh, I can just use my equation from even high school um, physics if I want and say, so my first step, I might want to find that acceleration. So I'm going to say, okay, well, um, vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a um, delta x. And I can easily find that A is equal to negative 22.5 feet per second squared. I know that the final velocity is zero. I know the initial velocity is um, 20 feet per second. I can find A, boom, boom, boom. And I know A has to be negative if I'm describing positive X as to the right. So now let me draw out my inertial and uh, free body diagrams. So my truck has collapsed to a rectangle. Not that you need to do that. I just did that for a beam. It, it very well does look like a beam. I'm sorry. What do you want from a, a structural engineer? Everything, every, everything is a beam. You're a beam. I'm a beam. Everything's a beam. Um, anyway, <laughs> you're nothing more than a series of complicated beams. Um, anyway, sorry. Uh, everything becomes a beam. So anyway, uh, the force is on here. I'm going to have my weight pulling down. And then uh, I'm going to have two forces applied to each wheel. And they, don't, they will not necessarily be equal. I'm going to have FA, the frictional, you know what, let me just call that, be consistent with what I had before. I like F, F sub A. I don't, I don't like just calling it FA. And then let's say I have, oh, maybe NA here for the normal force at A then the normal force at B and F, FB here. Let me move that to make sure it's not part of the weight. Okay, and then I will say that this is equivalent uh, to this inertial diagram or this kinetic diagram. Sometimes, sometimes I call them inertial diagrams and I suppose they're probably better labeled as, um, perhaps better labeled as uh, kinetic diagrams. And again, we'll have A and B. And uh, we will have 
a the only acceleration on this, the only inertial force on this, will be ma. And this a here, ma. I know this because it's not going, to, it's not tumbling through the air, it's not rotating. At least that's a reasonable assumption. We weren't told anything about how it went flying and and twisting through the air, et cetera, et cetera. So. Uh, if nothing else was stated, I'm going to be happy to assume that this thing um, went in, uh, just slid along the ground, etc. Uh, there we go. And I also want to point out that this will be a distance of four feet from the ground. And um, I would also want the dimensions here. This is five feet and seven feet. Five feet and seven feet. All right. <clears throat> now um, we're going to work through our equations here. Okay. So I'm going to analyze this one at a time, one direction at a time, and just start working through our equations. So I'm going to start with saying the summation of forces in the vertical direction. Uh, is equal to, well, it's just the summation of uh, effective forces. And this is going to be equal to Na uh, plus Nb minus 0, or minus W equals 0. Then, I, if I do a summation of forces in the x direction, I will get that negative Fa equals, so this is basically the sum of forces in the y direction equals Max, the summation of forces in the x direction, or sorry, the summation of forces in the y direction equals MAY, and the summation of forces in the x direction equals MAX. Um, so negative FA uh, minus FB is equal to negative MA, which is in the x direction. However, I can then tr uh, tr uh, change these frictional forces by saying, okay, look, well, FA an FB here. Well, let's think about this. This is going to be negative. Um, I know that FA is just going to be equal to the normal force times the coefficient of kinetic friction at A. So this is negative um, uh, mu kinetic uh, times NA minus mu kinetic uh, NB equals negative MA. Um, then or I could simply say equals negative mu kinetic uh, times um, Na plus Mb. Or another way I could, uh, I could say here, let me, uh, if I just multiply across by a negative, uh, let me think about this here. Uh, no, that's okay. Negative uh, mu kinetic times Na plus Mb is another way to, I could express this. Uh, equals negative MA. Then I could bring this W over here and say NA and B is equal to W. So negative mu kinetic times uh, W equals negative MA. Uh, then I could just cancel out the negative and put mu kinetic times MG equals MA. And the mass cancels out. And I get that mu kinetic equals A over G. And I definitely do not want to use 9.81. I want to use 32.2. So that's going to be 22.5, the acceleration we found previously, divided by 32.2. And this is then equal to 0 0.699. All right. So we now know the coefficient of uh, kinetic friction between the wheels and the ground. OK. So now I'm going to. Uh, use other principles to solve for the other quantities. I'm going to do a, uh, let me start by doing a summation of moments about point A. And if I review from statics, or go back and review some things from statics, look at this here. What happens if I do a balance of moments about point A? What happens if I do a balance of moments? Yeah, this force, this force, and this force will disappear because their line of action of this one, this one, and this one all pass through point A. So that's a good point some moments about. Um, and then if I do the same for B, this one, this one, and this one will, or this one, this one, or, or 
If I do moments dot b, this one, this one, and this one will cancel out, leaving this one. So by summing moments about uh, a, I'll be able to get n b very easily. By summing moments about uh, b, I'll be able to get a, a, n a very easily. And once I know the n a, if you just multiply by the coefficient of static or kinetic friction to get the uh, the frictional force. So this is just going to be negative uh, five feet times w. Uh, plus 12 feet times NB uh, equals, now however though this is going to be equal to um, here, oh actually I forgot one thing, I should also mention that we need to consider the balance of moments as MA. So we do have to be very careful with that in the sense that um, when we do the balance of moments we also have to consider the, any moment generated by our inertial forces. So this is going to have 4 feet times negative ma, or uh, 4 feet times ma, sorry. About point A, that acceleration is generating a uh, counterclockwise moment. Then if I solve for nb, if I solve this equation for nb, I will get negative 5 feet times w, the weight. Um, well actually, sorry, that's not quite right. If I solve for nb, I get 1 12th times 5w plus 4w over g times a, w over g times a, uh, which will then be equal to w over 12 uh, times 5 plus 4a over g. However, I can easily find all of these things, a I know, g I know, and if I do this, I will get that nb uh, here um, is equal to 0 0.650 w is equal to 0 0.650 w and then na uh, my na will be equal to w minus nb which will be 0 0.350 w we're talking about w not as watts or something like that but as in um, effects of the weight, okay? Here. Um, let me see something. Um, here. Hmm. At the front and the rear. Okay, here. Ah, okay, gotcha. Okay, and the goal that we were asked to find was the, if we go back here, uh, we were asked to find um, and on the force on each wheel. So we do have to be very careful with this. Um, I can then also say that, N, um, that NB, so we have NA and I have NB, However, uh, the normal force on the, the truck as a whole is not going to be the same thing as the force on each wheel. So N rear wheels is going to be equal to uh, 0 0.5 times uh, Na, which will then be 0 0.175 W. Yes, this is basically each wheel. So this is the uh, force on each wheel. Oh, sorry, par pardon my bad handwriting. 0 0.650. Is that there? 0.175 W. And then N front is going to be equal to um, 0 0.5 times NB. 0 0.5 times NB, which will be, uh, which will be, I'm so sorry, uh, 3.25 or 0.325 W. So we now know the wheel, the, the normal forces, uh, the vertical forces on the wheel. Then the friction forces, uh, FF um, rear. Uh, so force of friction in the, on the rear tire is going to be mu kinetic times N front. 
So that is going to be 0 0.690, which is the coefficient of friction we got before, times 0 0.175 W, and this is then equal to uh, 0 0.122 W. We're solving for all of this in terms of the weight, and then F, F front, that will be mu kinetic times, and, uh, oh, Actually, let's just say front, let's just say rear here, sorry about that. And this should be N front. And that will be 0 0.690. Should it be 0 0.699? Um, 0.699, what did we get before? Oh, did I write that down wrong? No, 609. Um, I'd have to, let me double check that number. Let me see that really quick here. Let me try uh, 22.5. There's some issue with my notes here. 22.5 divided by 32.2. 6.99. Actually, so yeah, that should say 6.99 here. Sorry. So let's make this 6.99. Let me double check that 0.175 as well. Uh, times 0.175. And yeah, 0.122. Okay, so we're good there. Just a typo on here. Um, 0.699 times 0.325 W. And this will be 0. Point, uh, let's say uh, 227 W. 0.227 W. Again, so that's that example problem. But again, what did we do? Well, we went through here and we started by. Um, we started by labeling the forces, uh, labeling the acceleration and the velocity, using what we knew, to, using the kinematics that we were given to solve for accelerations, to solve for the acceleration. Then after that, we went through and drew a free body diagram and a kinetic diagram. Then we worked through a balance of uh, forces in the x direction, forces in the y direction, balance of moments to solve for the unknown quantities that we desired. All right, questions on that. Okay, so maybe I'll look at another one. Let's look at a pulley problem, perhaps. <laughs> okay, well, moving on. All right, so we're going to look at a pulley problem. All right, so um, consider a pulley with a um, weight of 12 pounds and a radius of gyration of 8 inches, of 8 inches, and it's connected to two, uh, two blocks as shown, uh, to two blocks. All right, and I'll, I will say that we want to, assuming no axle friction, no axle friction, Uh, determine the angular acceleration of the pulley and the acceleration of each block. Uh, angular acceleration of the pulley, acceleration of the pulley, <coughs> and the acceleration of each block. Okay, so I'm going to have a pulley, and it's going to have an inner radius and an outer radius. <coughs> so it'll be a 
Not one of those simple pulleys, it just has one radius. We've got to make things complicated. So as I've drawn it, this perfect circular pulley. Now, um, this is, I don't know if you can tell, but this drawing is a perfect circle. Um, uh, you know, as I may have mentioned in this class before, but you know, if you, um, if it doesn't look to you like a perfect circle, well, you see, you got to learn, know something about optics. And see, just like, you know, there are, there are minute air currents in a room. And just like telescopes, if they're looking at distant light, they sometimes have to counteract for effects of atmospheric distortion. That's what's happening when you're watching the screen here. There is our minute air currents generated by the HVAC system in the room, and uh, and also chromatic uh, uh, chromatic uh, aberration in your own uh, uh, eyes, and that's what makes my circles appear as something that is not a pure circle. I mean, it's that's what it is. It's it's not my drawing skills. Yeah, maybe I should be a politician. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> All right, so here's, here's the center G. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to make this a little bigger. I, I don't think I have quite have, have enough room to draw what I want here. So let me draw another perfect circle. Man, a lot of... Uh, uh, chromatic aberration today. <laughs> a lot of atmospheric distortion today. <clears throat> Alright, so it's going to be supported by a pin here. And uh, then we'll have a uh, this inner, we'll have an inner radius of 6 inches and an outer radius of 10 inches. And then we'll have two different masses here. Uh, one will be the one. One will be hanging from the inner um, radius or the inner pulley, part of the pulley, and it will have a mass or a weight, I should say, of ten pounds. And then out here we will have a weight of five pounds. And this will have a weight of five pounds. five pounds. And uh, I think that'll do it and there'll be a little pin at G um, holding everything up. A little pin here holding everything up. Okay, so let's do that. So our first step will be to do what? What do you think our first step will be? Yeah, to sort of draw some free body diagrams, that kind of thing. Well, actually, the first thing I might do before that is before, uh, you know, I could label my um, my forces directly on here, but I think I might do a little detour and first uh, determine the direction of rotation. So I, uh, that would be nice if I could put that on my diagram showing, showing, uh, showing which way it's going to rotate. So I'm going to determine direction of rotation by summing moments of the pulley about the uh, about G. Um, direction of rotation by summing moments about G. Okay, so I could then say the sum of moments about G is equal to 10 pounds times 6 inches, uh, minus 5 pounds, times 10 inches. So that is the force that each one is applying, the weight of each block, times its radius from the center. So 10 pounds times 6 inches, minus 5 pounds times 10 inches. And this is 60 minus 50, and that comes to 10 inch pounds of moment. Not you, you see that often, but uh, and because it's positive, that means it will be counterclockwise rotation. So we'll have counterclockwise rotation. And then I, uh, let's see, um, I would be something like this. Mm. Um, I here is going to be equal to mk squared, mk squared, 
uh, here. So it's going to be equal to the mass, which is just uh, W over G. And K is going to be our radius here. Um, M K squared over G, which is, uh, so, so uh, sorry, M K squared, which is equal to W over G times K squared. And the outer radius then, actually, let me um, think of something here. Oh, sorry. Um, where this K is coming from again, as a reminder, uh, K is going to be our radius of gyration. Sorry about that. I should have defined that. And one formula for relating moment of inertia to radius gyration is that I can be thought of as equal to MK squared. And so we were, we were not given the overall uh, mass of the pulley, but we were given its, uh, well, I guess we were given its weight. Um, and we we're also given its radius of gyration, which will allow us to find I. So this is then equal to 12 pounds over 32.2 feet per second squared uh, times 8 uh, over 12 feet quantity squared. And I get that I is equal to 0 0.9 or 0.16. 1656, six, and we'll have a very awkward unit, pound foot second squared. Pound foot second squared. And then um, I want to, I also want to relate, well, maybe I'll do that on the next slide. Yeah, I'll do that over there. Uh, I also want to relate. Uh, acceleration of blocks of blocks to the alpha of the pulley, the angular acceleration and we can recall that the formula is going to be A equals R alpha or in our case we can say AA, the acceleration of block A is going to be equal to 10 over 12 feet times whatever alpha is, and AB is equal to 6 over 12 feet times whatever alpha is. All right, now I need to draw a complete free body, di free body and inertial diagram. So let's do that uh, here. And so I'm first going to show all the forces on this. And the forces here, so on the left I'll do the free body diagram with the forces. I have uh, 10 pounds, showing just the pulley right now. Um, well actually, let me consider the combined system, perhaps. So I'm going to draw the combined system twice. here. And then let me show the forces that are on the free body diagram. So I'll have 12 pounds. I'll have whatever vertical support, uh, whatever vertical force BY exists here. I'll have 10 pounds on this one and uh, 5 pounds on this one. 5 pounds on this one. Here we'll have um, MBAB. MBAB, and here we'll have um, MAAA. And I drew this so I could just get the, uh, I drew the, I, I calculated, sorry, I calculated the acceleration first or the direction of the rotation first, so I would know which direction to make these uh, acceleration arrows. And then this would be I alpha here. I alpha here. All right. Uh, questions on this so far. So again, I know this thing is going to be rotating counterclockwise, which means this block will be the right block will be accelerating upward, and the left block will be accelerating downward. Okay. 
So I'm going to do a summation of moments about uh, G. I'm going to start by doing a summation of moments about G. And um, here, and that will equal the, um, the effective accelerations, or the rotation, I should say. So um, let's consider this. I will have um, 10 pounds. So on the, on the top line, I'm going to do everything from, well, actually, we'll see. I can fit here. Uh, 10 pounds times 6 over 12 feet. That is the moment arm uh, from the left weight. Uh, and, it's po and it's positive because that is a, po a counterclockwise moment. Minus 5 pounds times uh, 10 over 12 feet. Uh, minus 10 over 12 feet. And this whole, so this is all the stuff from the, all of the rotation inducing forces from the uh, free body diagram. And then on the inertial diagram, or from the inertial diagram, I'll have I alpha, it equals I alpha, minus MA, uh, AA, MAAA, um, times, uh, let's say, 10 over 12 feet. Uh, 10 over 12 feet here. Uh, yeah, MA times 10 over 12 feet. And then plus MBAB times, uh, that will be 6 over 12 feet. Uh, 6 over 12 feet, actually that should be more like 6 over 12 feet like this. Okay. And now plugging in numbers and working through it, I can get that 10 times 6 over 12 um, minus 5 times 10 over 12 equals, um, let's see, uh, this is going to be equal to 0 0.1656 um, times alpha um, times alpha times alpha, and then converting these into um, alphas as well. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn my A's into alphas. So I'm gonna say plus, um, with, the M with the MB term, 10 over 32.2 uh, times six over 12 alpha, times six over 12, minus five over 32.2, uh, times 10 over 12, uh, 10 over 12 alpha, I believe, 10 over 12 alpha times 10 over 12. And if you work through this and solve for alpha, you'll get that alpha is equal to 2.374 uh, radians per second squared. That will be the angular acceleration and it will be counterclockwise. Uh, so there, oh, and also the way I got this, um, I do know that uh, the way I got the things for this equation are, well, I know, I'm just basically putting a few things in here. Namely, I, I calculated earlier that I equals 0 0.1656 pounds feet per second squared. AA, and I know that AA is just, again, A is equal to R alpha, as we've seen previously in the course. 10 over 12 alpha, uh, feet per second squared. And then AB is equal to 6 over 12 alpha feet per second squared. Feet per second squared. And that's alpha. And then I, once I have this, I can very easily find AA and AB. AA is going to be um, 10 over 12 feet, the radius, times 2.374. Uh, here, or just 1.978 feet per second squared upward, and AB is equal to 6 over 12 feet, I guess this would be feet as well, 6 over 12 feet times 2.374, uh, the same uh, radians per second squared, and this comes to 1.187 of feet per second squared. And this would be accelerating downward. 
All right, so I could work through more example problems like this, but I think they kind of all um, break down along those lines. We may look at, I think we'll continue on with some constrained um, plane motion next time, but I think that covers a brief introduction to plane motion, which is what I want to cover today. So I think we'll get out a little bit early today, uh, a rare event for uh, this class, but um, maybe I'll give you all a break and let you, out, let you go for the weekend. So. All right, that'll do it for today. I will see you all on Tuesday, and uh, as always, thank you.